All right. So now, let's see. Uh, where do I want to go from here? So uh, in order to make progress here, I still have to give you one more piece of information. And this is, again, supposed to be realistic. Um, you know, when I was three years old and my brother's friend Ralph was seven, I watched him throwing darts a lot. And um, I would say that for Ralph, so, so for Ralph, uh, at age seven, anyway. Later on, he got a little better at it. But at, Ralph, at age seven, the probability that he hit the target was a, a, about a half. All right? So he, he, he hit the target about half the time. And the other times, you know, it, there was cement on the walls of the basement. It wasn't that bad. You know, so it just bounced off. That also meant that the points got a little blunter as time went on, so it was a little less dangerous when they hit you. All right, so now, so here's the, here's the, the extra assumption that I want to make. So A is going to be the radius of the target. Now, the other uh, realistic assumption that I want to make is uh, where this little kid would be standing and now here I want to get uh, very specific and just do the computation in one case. We're going to imagine the target is, is here, and the kid is standing, say, between, so we'll just do a section of this. This is between 3 o'clock and uh, 5 o'clock. There's, there, there, there's more of him, but it's, but it's lower down and maybe negligible here. So this section is the part, the chunk that we want to, to uh, see about. And this is A, and then this distance here is 2A, and then the, the longest distance here is 3A. So, so, so the longest distance is 3A. So in other words, what I'm saying is that the probability, if you're standing too close, The chance Ralph hits um, younger brother is about a sixth, right? Because because two over twelve is equal to six. Uh, sorry, is equal to a sixth. Um, a sixth of the probability that we're between a and three a. All right? That's the number that we're, we're looking for. Another question. Yes, where did the 2 over 12 come from? The 2 over 12 came from the fact that we assumed, so we made a very, very bold assumption here. We assumed that this human being who is actually standing, uh, uh, right, the floor is about down here, right? Maybe he wasn't that tall, but anyway. Um, so he's really a little bigger than this, that the part of him that was close to the target covered about this section here between radius 2a and 3a. As you'll see actually from the, from the computation, because the likelihood drops off pretty quickly, um, whatever of him was standing outside there wouldn't have mattered anyway. So we're just worried about the part that's closest to the target here. Uh, why is it out of 12? Because I made it a clock, and I made it from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock, so it's two of the 12 hours of a, of a clock. All right? It's just a way of me making a section that, that you can visibly see. All right? Okay, so now, so here's, the, here, here's what we're trying to calculate. And in order to figure this out, I need one more item here. So maybe I'll leave myself a little bit of room. I have to figure out something about uh, what our information gave us, which is that the probability, sorry, this, this probability was a half. So let's remember what this is. This is going to be e to the minus 0 squared minus e to the minus a squared. That's what this probability is. And that's equal to a half, all right? 
So that means that 1 minus e to the minus a squared is equal to a half, which means that e to the minus a squared is a half. I'm not going to calculate a. I, this is the part about the information about a that I want to use. So that's, that's what I'll use. And now I'm going to calculate this other probability here. So the probability right up there is, is this. And that's going to be the same as e to the minus 2a, the quantity squared, minus e to the minus 3a, the quantity squared. That's the, the, what we calculated. And now I want to use some of the arithmetic of uh, exponents. This is e to the minus a squared, the quantity to the fourth power, right? Because it's really uh, 2a squared is 4. The quantity is 4a squared. And then I bring that exponent out. Minus e to the minus a squared to the ninth power, that's 3 squared. And so this comes out to be a half to the fourth power minus a half to the ninth power, which is approximately 1 16th. This is negligible, this, this part here. And this is actually why these tails, as you go out to infinity, don't really matter that much. So this is a much smaller number. So the probability of the whole band is 1 16th. And now I can answer the question up here. This is approximately uh, a sixth times a sixteenth, which is about one one hundredth, or about one percent. So if I stood there for a hundred attempts, then my chances of getting hit were pretty high. All right? So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the computation. All right. Okay, so that's that's a, a typical example of of of, uh, of of a of a problem in in probability. And let me just make one more connection with what we did before. This is connected to weighted averages or integrals over weights, but the weight that's involved in this problem was w of r is equal to, uh, so let's just look at what, all, what happened in all those integrals. What happened in all the integrals was we had this factor here, 2 pi r. And if, if I include the c, it was really, um, yeah, it was really 2 pi c r e to the minus r squared. This was the weight that we were using, the relative importance of things. Now, this is not the same as the e to the minus r squared that we started out with, because this is the one-dimensional uh, histogram. And that has to do with the method of shells that gave us that extra factor of r here. So that also connects with the question at the beginning, which had to do with this paradox that it looks like these places in the middle are the most likely. But that's the plot of e to the minus r squared. If you actually look at this plot here, you see that as r goes to 0, it's going to 0. This is a different graph here. And actually, it, 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 so, so this is what's happening, really, in terms of how likely it is that you'll get within a certain distance of the center of the target. Okay, again, it's not the area under that curve that we're doing. It's that, that volume of revolution. Okay. All right, we're going to change subjects now. Oh, okay, one more question. Yes. Um, so if that's the graph of the weight. Um, yeah, that was the graph. That's supposed to be the graph of W of R. Wouldn't the weight be greater though at the center? Like, wouldn't you, intuitively, wouldn't the weight be greatest at the center? Like, the importance? Well, so uh, the question is, wouldn't the importance of the center be, be greatest? It's a question of which variable you're using. According, according to pure radius, it's, it's not. It turns out that there are some bands in radius which are more important and more likely for hits than others. It really has to do with the fact that the center, the core of the target, is really tiny. 
and so it's harder to hit. Whereas a whole band uh, around the outside has a lot more area. There are many, many ways to hit that band. So it's a much larger area. So there's a, a, a competition there between those two things.